read it. So, actually, actually, it's the only book I've ever read because then I found out about <laughs> Autobot after that. <laughs> Can so we bring to this day, I, I it's the only book I've ever read. I don't know if you want to admit that. No, let's talk I about that. that. All right, welcome to the Big Deal Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about things pertaining to Vancouver real estate, its suburbs, and business in general. We also like to bring on people who are kind of a big deal from time to time. I'm your co-host, That Agent Kelly, here with Jarrett White, a.k.a. That Guy That Does Mortgages. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment, a like, subscribe, click the bell to be notified every time a new episode comes out. If you're watching or listening to this anywhere else, like maybe Spotify, leave us a rating or follow us or whatever it is you have to do on that platform. Today, our guest, Clayton Dybert, number six at Creekside Realty, uh, medallion member 2021. Yeah. Yeah. You have to shout that out, number six. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I of didn't course. even know until you got in the car with me. Oh, I mean, the man's got yeah. accolades. I got right? in the car and I was like, man, congrats. You're number, you're, you're number six. I saw you're number six. He's like, what? <laughs> I was literally asking, like, for what time period? Like, what did I do? <laughs> That's too funny. But it was for, I guess, the whole six months, I guess. That's yeah, awesome. so maybe like I guess give people an intro on when you got started and uh, kind of why you even got into real estate. Yeah, no, I got into real estate because it was like I was working up north on the rigs, okay. right? I had a plan. I just wanted to go there. I wanted to make some money. I wanted to get a house, get ahead and get out, right? So and now while I was doing that, I was saving up. I was the loser at camp, you know, the guy that wakes up early, goes to the gym, reads yeah. money books in his lunch break. Has life goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Has some maybe ambitions, <laughs> yeah, things like yeah. that. I was a loser. Yeah, AKA. of course. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, after reading a few books like Rich Dad Poor Dad and Real Estate Investing in Canada while I was up north and like I bought a house in Kelowna actually and then I was finding my exit strategy and I was watching guys get paid the same amount as me that, you know, show up half cut sleeping under the tool bench and I'm out there busting my ass doing a good job making the same amount of money. I was like, there's got to be a better way that I can leverage my skills and like just the way I am as a person. Yeah. Make money based on the time you put in and what you put in. Yeah. There, right. Instead of just getting paid exactly. the same as everyone else. That, that's what I found too. Like when I was doing plumbing, I, I, I found a way to like make still a hundred percent to the same amount of money, but like only putting <laughs> well, that, in that's like the goal. 15% no, that's, of the if effort. You were, right? Why wouldn't you though? If you're employed, like you want to get to a point where you're still doing the same quality, but in like less work. Yeah. Because you want to do the least amount of work possible and make the most amount of money. That's, well, that's the goal. working right? smarter, not harder. So, yeah. So like, I don't, I don't blame anyone for that. Like that's kind of the employed mentality. But if you are working a lot harder, then it is definitely more beneficial just yeah. to yeah. find your own. And then real, real estate specifically, I was always uh, like, because I was re reading real estate investing books, I was finding cash flow. I was looking for good properties, I was running analysis on a whole bunch of stuff, like for myself, for friends in my spare time. So I was like, well, damn, like I actually, I must enjoy doing this if I'm spending my spare time doing it. So I talked to the realtor that I used to buy and a couple other people that I knew that were in real estate and just decided that, okay, like let's rock and roll. So from there I ordered my books and never looked back. So when about was that? How long ago? Um, I ordered my books January 1st of 2017. Fresh year, fresh start. <laughs> yeah, new year, new me, right? Yeah. Exactly. 2017, so five year, you're five, just on five years? Well, I didn't get licensed. I was up and running November 17th of the same year. Okay. So it took me, you know, 11 months to get up and running um, just because, you know, I was still working up north and it takes time to do the course and I failed once because the course is hard and I'm a dumb dumb. It, <laughs> it is a tough course, actually, though. Um, who do you? Who told you to read Rich Dad Poor Dad? You obviously follow like some YouTubers or something like that. Um, honestly, I had a a buddy um, of mine who was like an older brother, kind of that was working on the rigs, and he was like into the same kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, we we both ended up reading those books together in the lunchrooms, and yeah. we we're just like best buds. We trained together in the mornings. We read books like nerds yeah. at lunch, and. <laughs> And he lives in PEI. He's actually, he's now a cop there and he owns multiple pieces of real estate and he's doing great for himself. So we both like, you know, met each other in the in the oil field, utilized each other as leverage and yeah. like boost each other up and we both got out. That's while, awesome. Well, yeah. we watch a lot that, of people. That was the book that did it for me too. I remember I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, when, a I was like, out. I gotta get on this book. Have, I, actually, I, know, I know the book. I've heard mm -hmm. of the book. I just, yeah, I've never you read it. You have to read it. So, actually, actually, it's the only book I've ever read. 
because then I found out about <laughs> Autumn <Autobiography. laughs> Can so we break to this day? I, I it's the only book I've ever read. I don't know if you want to admit that. No, let's talk about that. I will proudly let's... admit that on camera while looking at it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that book completely changed the trajectory of my life after I read that book. Do you at least oh, listen, to, listen to a few books? Yeah, I, on Audible. Okay. You guys didn't let me finish. You were already laughing, <laughs> laughing at me before I even finished. I said that was the, fir- the only book I ever read until I discovered Audible. Okay. So I, I listened to books. Okay. I, I'm not, okay I, I am in the same category, but you're on a sliding scale a little bit further than me. Because I, I, I don't enjoy reading. I'm like ADD. I just need to be moving. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you're a higher level than I am even. Because I thought I was bad. I read. I try to read like a book a quarter. Yeah. I try to force myself to like, especially because I've done 75 hard a couple of times. So like I try to incorporate reading at least 10 pages, just forcing myself to sit down yeah. and do it. And then you just end up blasting through books that I way. can't. I just don't have the attention span for it. I like read a paragraph. I'm like, what did I just read? Right. Well, Audible was a game changer for sure. Yeah, because yeah, I, I had to read three um, three books called "Be the Better Broker." It's by Dustin Woodhouse. He's like a he's the owner of Mortgage Architects or the CEO of Mortgage Architects, and they made me read them before I even like kind of got up and going. And I had like a month time period. They're like, when you're done these books, you can get up and going. So I'm like, man, I'm not gonna finish these like thick books in in a month all three of them so i just threw them all on audible two times speed every <laughs> all, two times speed. all day long yeah. <laughs> just like that's what i do too it's way more efficient honestly like one, I, I say like probably 1.4 to 1.6 is perfect because yeah. one is too slow right like, like I, I do 1.25 that's my one it feels like they're like trying to like read a lullaby to you and you could like fall asleep it's just so slow and the yeah. voice is so deep they're trying to serenade you with yeah voice. whereas like two it's like too fast but 1.5 1.6 you can burn through a book so fast yeah <laughs> so hold the hold up so when did you read rich dad poor dad would have been 2016 for me as well or maybe 2017 have you read it since no i only read it the one time go back and read it again so i read it the first time in the oil field probably 2016 same as you and then I read it again. I was doing a wealth series course that uh, my broker owner was putting on. And one of the things for homework we had to do before we start the class was re- read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I was like, oh, that'll be easy. I already read it. Like there was so many things in that book that like I thought I understood, but until I read it again, like, you know, how many years later, how, when, how long ago was that? That's like six years Six now. years, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then it, it, I read it again and it clicked so, like, so much more drastically where it's like, a big holy shit moment of like, okay, I heard these words coming out, but I didn't truly understand it. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm in the game and more experienced now, like those things came back again and like made, made a big difference. So I'd, I'd read it again. No, you're totally right. I I do need to read that book again. And that I actually do do that with other books. Like I've read the compound effect by, I think his name is Darren Hardy. I've read that one like three times. Kind of ironic. The compounding effect that you just read it over and over. Yeah. Yeah. It is a little bit ironic, (laughs) but uh, yeah. Cause uh Corey George, he's like the owner of Yesa Inc. They do like a bunch of coaching and stuff for Grant Cardone. Uh, He was saying, he's like, don't even bother reading like 50 books. Just find like a couple books that have really taught you something and just reread them like three, four, five times, right? You'll absorb way more information that way than just like spreading yourself too thin. Yeah. Right? Because you're kind of taking on like a bunch of different people's ideologies when it's like realistically, you should just kind of stick to one game plan. Mm -hmm. Either that unless you have like unless you could have a nice drawn map of what you want to do and you can like cherry pick ideas to fill the, to fill your map. Totally. But, That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, you know, one of my buddies, I can't even remember who it was, um, but he decided that he was going to read a book and he wasn't going to start another book until he the, implemented the things that he learned in the first book into his life on like a consistent basis before he would start another book. Yeah, that's smart. That is smart. That's yeah. way too dedicated for me, to yeah. be completely honest. Well, it's not It's not enough to just learn the information. You actually have to take action on it. Otherwise, it's all useless, mm-hmm. right? So um, with uh, with real estate, though, in your first year, how did you actually find that? Oh, was it sucked. It, it sucked? Dude, like, well, I was living in Kelowna. That's where, because I bought a house there at the yeah. time. You know, as long as I was close to an airport, it didn't matter where I lived. And Kelowna was a great place to buy. Yeah. Bought a house with a suite for under $500,000. And uh, so... Because I didn't know anybody, I was kind of chasing deal for deal and I didn't really build a proper foundation for the business. Like yeah. I was very transactional and like just finding leads from anywhere I could and working them, working them, working them. I mean, I did not bad considering. I did 12 deals in my first year, in a, like year and two months. That's pretty good for like 
something that yeah. sucked. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I had a lot of things spoon fed to me where like, you know, I made friends with different mortgage brokers yeah. and you know, they fed me a deal and that kept me alive for a couple months. You know what I mean? Cause like I started real estate strapped, but not right. the, like tapped out of my credit card, tapped out of my line of credit, no money, mortgage. No way. Yeah, dude, that's how I started real estate. So every time you got a commission, it was like, this is so much time I have, not even this is yeah. so much money. <laughs> I was living like Justin Timberlake. We were talking that about that yeah. when we first started. It's like, man, we got like a couple months in the tank. <laughs> I don't even count. It's not even dollars anymore. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, that's like two and a half months. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's living living in that state of like, um, whatever is the opposite of abundance. Scarcity. <laughs> Scarcity, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just like, because it was like probably that whole year was a year of scarcity, probably about a year after that. Because actually, my buddies were asking me the other day, like, when did you finally get traction in your business? And it probably wasn't until after lockdowns. Really? So yeah. It took, well, so I had traction so it took right like before a year and lockdowns. A half before you started getting traction. So a year in Kelowna and almost a year back home before okay. I actually got so traction. So year three. Yeah. I found that's the most common that I hear is like, uh, people's business typically doesn't take off until like year three. Isn't that when you got medallion 2021 or would that um, be 2020? No, 2020. So it's not technically medallion is presence because I'm Cadreb oh, okay. Chilliwack district real estate board. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. so it's a different pool. Yeah, different, different co- like name for the award too. I'm guessing, yeah, right? Literally the yeah. same thing. It's your, yeah. what is it? Top 5%. 10, I think it's 10 is medallion. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I, I have no I idea. I think it's 10. I'm pretty sure yeah. you guys have like 10 X the realtors in the, well, if you're, are you Fraser Valley or Vancouver? I'm actually Vancouver, but mm. oh, I are? should switch over. Yeah. Oh, is it because this is considered Greater Vancouver? Yeah. What about the Langley office? That's Fraser Valley, right? That's Fraser Valley. He would have to change his license to be held in that office, and then that makes no sense because can't you can't you couldn't you have listings in Greater Vancouver or yeah. Fraser Valley? But yeah. Why does it all is the it boards? Just, is it just to keep track or what? Yeah, it is kind of. I mean, like you can take listings in any board. But what's like the advantage to being a Fraser Valley realtor or a Greater Vancouver realtor? You don't have to pay a deal fee. So like if you're oh, if you're a GVR realtor and then you list a house in the Fraser Valley, you have to pay like it's like a hundred dollar deal fee or something oh, no. like that. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, it kind of <laughs> so, sucks. So, the, so there is an added fee if you're yeah. listing outside. What if you're buying helping someone buy outside? Same added fee. I actually don't know. No, I don't okay. ever look to be honest. I don't look either. I have no I, idea. I don't want to look. I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to look at how much money they take of my <laughs> money. Yeah, I don't want to look at the pay stuff. <laughs> There's like five or six things on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All the stupid things that I order through my office, then yeah. like all your my deal fees yeah. and whatever splits there may be. Like, yeah. I don't want to look at that. Yeah. Why, why do you think it changed after like a year and a half? What were you doing different? Uh, I don't know if it was necessarily anything that I was doing different, but I mean. I, I probably was because I was actually learning what works and what doesn't. This would be in Chilliwack now, right? Um, yeah. So point? yeah, I, I live in Abbotsford. Oh, yeah, Abbotsford, Chilliwack, Michigan. My, like yeah. yeah, those those are my three main areas. Um, but yeah, once I was back in the Fraser Valley, yeah, I mean, I was slowly learning where to invest my money, whether it be for doing things for any sort of lead generation, whether it be ads, Facebook ads, you know, doing events, giving people different types of gifts, whatever it may be. Yeah. And so you know, finally found my path a little bit and my rhythm and like advertising. I started doing a lot of video content where I was making a lot of making like information videos and then I'd edit them and make them yeah. fun. And then I ended up eating stupidly hot chicken wings on camera yeah. while oh, trying I, to tell a real estate tip. I was one of those. Dude, that, <laughs> you're like crying while yeah. you're eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Those he has worst. like these super hot wings and he, he has like a question or whatever like a real estate question and he's answering the question while he's eating the hot wing and he's like trying not to, to cry <laughs> dude I'm, that's I, pretty funny i thought i was gonna die it was bad is that the bobby wing or is that just no. like homemade dude the bobby wing's not bad really? i've had the bobby wing no so you know the show hot ones on youtube Dude, we were just talking about with that Sean right Evans. before the podcast yeah. started they but have, i've like, never celebrities seen and stuff on right dude to- so <laughs> one of the sauces it's a little bomb with a nuke on it. It's called the bomb and it just murders everyone. Not only is it hot, it's the, it's usually the third from the end. So it's not on the Schoolville rating. It's not their hottest wing or their hottest sauce, but it just tastes so damn awful. And it just sears like my gums were on fire. Brutal. Yeah. It's like I, I ate a whole tub of Greek yogurt trying to cool off my face. <laughs> it didn't work. I had like, I was curled over in pain. I drove to the store. I was like trying to buy Pepto and, Tums, I was like looking like a junkie in lineup, tr- shaking hands, trying to open up these pill containers so I could pop a Tums because I was in pain. <laughs> That's too funny. So don't eat the bomb but on that, chicken wings. But it for works. Fun. It generated leads though. Yeah, whether it, I don't think it directly got yeah. leads, but, but it 
people made people watch and made me realize how much people paid attention to my stuff. Yeah. Because there's people that would come out of the woodworks I'd run into that I haven't literally talked to since the day I left high school. And they're like, yo, I see your videos. It looks like you're crushing it in real estate. I'm like, really? Like you don't show up in any of my things. Like just cause they're not engaging or liking or doesn't whatever. Mean maybe not they doesn't it. mean yeah. they're not watching. Cause they're, yeah. they're watching. Cause yeah, people I haven't talked to and That's don't show video, up in my feed. It's so important. Cause people remember that stuff. Mm-hmm. People are like this guy remembered, right? People yeah. remember that video, right? Yeah. Which yeah, the other day, we, the other day, oh we, yeah, uh, my video. Yeah, yeah. The other day, we had a uh, we were out for for lunch at the Barley Merchant in Langley, yeah. and some old guy across the whole room comes up to Connor and he's like, "Are you that guy on TikTok?" Like some old guy. Yeah, in, right? in front of like right? yeah, five in front of, other in front of all of us. We're all just sitting there like, "What?" The Damien's fuck? jaw was dropped. He was like, yeah. "Did that just?" The guy's happen? like, "I just had, I just had to come over and see if it was you and and say hi and yeah. all that stuff." I was yeah. like, "Rob, oh my god!" Across nice the room, guy. like behind everyone, like he was actually like looking basically. He was yeah. this like, eagle eyeing you through the crowd. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Seeing the forest Rob. through the trees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, what does your business look like today? Like, what are you doing to generate business? Um, where you're like, where your leads coming from, that kind of thing. Most of it, actually like 95% of my business is my sphere of influence or referrals from people in my sphere of influence. Sphere, really? Yeah. That's most of your business now. Yeah. Eh? I don't do any advertising. <clears throat> you, do you do any like active prospecting or anything like that? Um, define active prospecting. Are you making calls? Are you door knocking? No. None of that stuff. <laughs> eh? No. <laughs> so are you just doing like videos through your instagram and stuff like that or? honestly as as soon as i got busy as i gained traction in 2020 after lockdowns i didn't have time to edit them anymore so i right. stopped so i stopped doing videos i was just busy and then i tried my best to keep up just showing what's going on in real estate whether it be little updates or even it's just even if it's just my listings and solds or whatever like just posting yeah. all the time keeping me top of mind and it seemed to work i mean i've also always been like super networky like if i met people at a party i kept in touch with them and kept them on social media and like stayed in touch with them like i've always been that guy and now it's their stuff and all that type of stuff yeah exactly like i've always just been like i've just liked having a lot of friends i guess i don't know yeah just wanted them all and uh (laughs) so so and i wasn't like in high school i was never mean to anybody i always had a mentality of like oh the nerd's one day gonna be my boss like i should be nice to him now yeah right yeah and i mean Maybe that is the case, maybe not. But either way, like no one, no one had a too bad taste in my. In Nobody really had anything exactly. bad yeah. to say, right? Yeah. So, so <clears throat> that that all is part of it too, and it's just uh, that's just the way I'm. At. If I can stop at four people's houses on the way home from work just to say hi, I will. So, that kind of stuff and my personality just, I never really did too much. I've I've dabbled. Yeah. I've tried some lead gen, some online stuff, some Facebook ads, but nothing. Never had good success with Facebook ads. I've no, never me had. neither. Apparently there's a strategy to it. Apparently, um, I was reading the other day, like there, there's one where it's like, like the first video should be like a, just like an, like, like just get their attention type of thing. And then like the other videos, like that you just retarget to that same group are like, like, um, reviews and stuff like that to like more like kind of solidify you, like how good you are in their mind. And then like after that stuff, then there's the, the actual lead generation video, which is the, like, you need to click the link below type, type of stuff like that. And apparently like a strategy like that works best, but like everyone just tends to try to do like one video and like, one and done. yeah, just, just, just go for the end goal right off the bat. Whereas like, you got to get something like eye catching right, right front just to get them to recognize you. And then like some kind of actual, there needs to be like an engagement ad, yeah. which like leads to a retargeting conversion ad. And like, yeah, exactly. Like so you, you, there's campaign. a whole strategy to it rather than just like, putting money into it because I think if you just put money into Facebook with like a lead generation campaign you, you get like the worst either the worst leads ever or you just end up blowing your money for no no reason yeah I, I did run some Facebook ads for a while uh, I guess this was actually in 2020 housing prices were still low you could find houses that cash flowed left right and center like the numbers made sense to do it but it's when the market was cool and people just weren't buying um, and what was it I did one for one in promontory for detached houses through Facebook. And like, I guess this realtor that I follow from Alberta, he like just has the Facebook ad algorithm down really well and how to structure it to get good returns. And dude, I had so many leads. I didn't know what to do with them. I had to turn it off because like, you know, I, you know, I had like a bit of a drip set up and like a couple things through Zapier for like automation. 
like I'd like in a couple of days I'd like 28 leads. I'm like, I I don't have time for these. It's so overwhelming. Yeah, so I literally just turn it off, put those in a drawer, and never opened it again. Yeah, yeah. Even calling those leads, like t- to call 28 leads, is probably like hour and a half right there. Just calling 28 leads. I mean, and 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 if you, God forbid, you end up talking to one for 30 minutes, right? Like that could be your whole day. Right yeah. There. Imagine you actually have a good conversation with a Facebook lead. I know it'd be crazy. That would be wild. Yeah. I can't say I've had that. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I I've had that quite a few times, but I've also I've had some made, good like, conversations with some TikTok leads. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's one world that I just I can't do it. Matt, it's the it same thing. Phone. If you're gonna do informational videos on Instagram, you might as well do it on TikTok too. Just Get repost way the more same exposure. video. It gets way more views. You'd be surprised. Like I, I believe it. it, but it's it's my time. Yeah, I know. I but just, you're already making the video for Instagram. But I'm not. When is last? When no, is last but time? if you do, you might as well post it on the other one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it's double the reach. Uh, we'll see. We'll Even see though you have a go. following on Instagram, I bet you if you post the same video on Instagram to TikTok with zero followers, it's gonna get more views. I bet you're right. I, I would actually bet you money on that. 100%. Well, well between you guys and, and then Alex telling me what he's <clears throat> done with TikTok so far, like that's pretty impressive. It's just the platform. My biggest easy. my biggest mortgage my biggest mortgages have all been off TikTok. How how much business have you actually gained from it directly? Probably like seven million mortgages by now. Seven million mortgages and what? We don't want to break this down too hard. What? <laughs> okay, brokers make roughly anywhere between 0.8 and 1.2% of the loan amount. Okay. So in that range of 60 to 80,000 from all, TikTok. All for free too, right? All for free advertisement, organic off TikTok. Yeah. And that's not even me calling them. That's just like wake up one morning, application filled out, documents ready to go. I already do the pre-approval. Just they're, call they're them and say, oh, you're good. you're good for this amount. Or it's someone saying, I want to remortgage and I need $900,000. It's like, okay, submit it the next day. Keep your foot on the gas, man. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So how did uh, 2021 look for you? How many deals? Like 2021. It's 2022 right now. Last year. Oh, that was my that was my biggest, best year I've had, which I mean, probably most realtors it is. Yeah. If they've been in it less than 10 years. Yeah. Um, what I do? 41 deals. Wow. Um, That's really good. Yeah. Thank you. Off um, of Sphere too. Yeah. Yeah, although I do get quite a bit of referrals from Kelowna because I because I was so hungry in Kelowna that I just like made friends with all the agents, like as many as I could, other offices in my own office. So now like they get someone for the Fraser Valley, you better believe they're calling me, mm. right? So I actually do get a lot of business from there as well, but I include that in my calculations for Sphere and referrals from Sphere. Mm, You'd be awesome. surprised where you can get business from. It's crazy. It just comes there everywhere. Yeah. yeah you j- Did I tell you the story about the getting pulled over yeah, yeah. but you gotta so, retell it so yeah so, juicy let's so la- last week or not last weekend but the weekend before that i had a buddy that was a little bit drunk and needed to ride home and i was just chilling at home so he's like hey could you come pick me up and i'm like okay sure I'll go get him I'm driving him home and i'm on low heat and i'm going a little too fast like a little too fast because i'm talking to him i was probably going 80 on on low heat but it's a it's technically a 50 zone mm-hmm. um so lights go behind me i get pulled over cop comes up he's like oh have you been drinking and i'm like no no i'm just driving my buddy home and then um he's like so if i breathalyze you like you're gonna blow zero i'm like yeah 100 percent blow zero he's like i guess that's what we're gonna do so he like calls my bluff <laughs> even though i'm not really bluffing because I, I haven't had anything and gets me to come out of the car and go stand by his car and he noticed I was chewing gum, so he's like, oh, you gotta spit that out, and, and we're gonna have to wait for a little bit. Wait half an hour on the roadside? No, so it's like, we, he's like, well, we're gonna have to wait five minutes, 10 minutes, or whatever. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we're just chilling there, and then all of a sudden, he's like, he's like, so what do you do for work? I'm like, oh, I'm a mortgage broker. He's like, oh, nice, I think my, uh, my mortgage is up for renewal in August. I'm like, well, you should probably look at getting it done now, because the interest rates are going up July 13th, likely. And then you're gonna have a lower payment if you get it done sooner than, than waiting, right? And he's like, he's like, oh, well, I'm probably just gonna go variable, so it won't matter because if rates go up, my, my payment would go up anyways. And I was like, well, there's a variable where your payment is the same the entire time, mm-hmm. and if you get it done before the 13th, at least you get the lower payment set. He's like, oh, really? And he's like, oh, can I actually have your business card? I gave him my business card. <laughs> and he's like, after I gave him my business card, he's like, okay, now time to blow. So I blew in the breathalyzer, <laughs> blew zero. Imagine if he just blew like on my point, all good point oh six. <laughs> It just blows like a one point oh. How drunk are you, man? <laughs> all good to go. Gives me my license back. Puts me in the car. I right, go back in my car. Drive away. Wake up the next morning. 
full application, all docs ready. He must have done it literally in his patrol car. And no, I idea. just I just got the mortgage instructed to the lawyers like last week. Like like end of last week. So so like five days what day is it? So on Friday. So six days ago it got instructed to the lawyers. So now we're just waiting to close and yeah, you never know where you can get business, man. <laughs> That's a good story. I like that. It's That's crazy. Awesome. That's the craziest thing that's ever happened to me. That's hilarious, man. So, um, what do you think? I mean, you might have already answered this already, but like 41 deals, solo agent, that's that's a lot of business. What do you think has made you successful? Hmm. I think the fact that I actually care about the outcome for the individual, like that I, yeah, I don't know, you put good out there, you get kind of good back type that karma, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I actually want to teach people. I actually want to help people. I actually want to get people in a better financial situation. You know, like I'll leave little breadcrumb trails of, of, of knowledge that if I'll see if they bite it and if they're curious and want more, then, you know, we'll take them down the next road and like teach them a little bit more about how they can better their lives with using their financial situation, using the vehicle of the business of real estate. So with that, that's been kind of like my, my motto slash purpose for the last little bit. So it's been, it's been driving me really well and just staying on top of things and being transparent and yeah, just hustling, I guess. That's awesome. And that makes sense. I mean, if, if all your, if all your business is coming through sphere and referrals, I mean, you, you would have to be living that to do 40, whatever deals. So that's awesome, man. Um, do you have like a, <laughs> do you have like a famous, like a, a quote that comes into your head on, on a regular basis that just kind of reminds you to stay on track or anything like that? Like I have a few that I kind of keep in my head from time to time that I pull out and put okay. them on the spot. To, to, help, to help me think of something, let's, let's hear like the ones that you've got. Oh, I'm not going to steal them. Turn, turn the no, table. No, I've never had the tables turned on me like this. Okay, so one quote that uh, this is going to sound ridiculously stupid. Kevin Gates put out a song in 2014 called I Don't Get Tired, and I actually have it tattooed on my arm. No, you don't. I do. So it just serves as a reminder anytime that I stop hustling, like I can't not hustle. Like I have I Don't Get Tired tattooed on my arm. So that's that's a quote that you, comes into my mind. Where? You got to show it. It's, it's IDGT. I just oh, hit wow. it underneath the eye. I don't get tired. I didn't make it like freaking, I don't get tired. <laughs> yeah, like, like no right. regrets across your chest. Yeah, I just made it nice and small. But no that's tired. just something that I that I think about. I, anytime I'm like, you know, I'm not doing enough right now. I just remember that like I literally have this on me. So I have to live up to that. Right. Yeah. There was a famous quote. Um, it's make home as you make it by Joe Dirt. That's a, <laughs> that's a good one. That I like to tell my clients. Um no, for a single quote, I know there's a lot of people that have been fairly influential in mindset, but I'm having a trouble picking out like a particular quote. Mm. It is a tough question. One that's kind of stuck with me is, um, have you guys read any books by Ryan Serhan or no? Yeah. yeah. It's the, the no one likes to be sold, but everyone likes to shop with friends. Yeah. So try to become your client's friends, have real relationships and like the, the, Actually, you won't actually have to sell them because they, they'll feel like they're just shopping with you to buy a home or to get a mortgage rather than you actually selling them something. I love it when I come out of a, a transaction with new friends. Yeah, it's exactly. Nice. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny because a lot of people say like, because um, I know there's a quote that uh, a lot of people say that your, your clients are more likely to be your friends than your friends are likely to be your clients. So, but I don't, I guess I don't really, I'm not a really good person to rep that because most of my friends are my clients and then I also I'm just a friend hoarder I think yeah, it's also a little hoarder. bit easier in that sense in the real estate department because like a lot of people just are they don't like to share their finances with people that are close mm -hmm. so as like a mortgage broker like family friends like like people that are too close sometimes we even turn down because like if we if we have to say like oh you, you can't get this or like you have to go with a b-land or stuff like that people are like embarrassed about their credit sometimes and it's like Sometimes it's not even worth doing it for someone that's like too, too close to you. Yeah. Like, like because it can actually cause like a lot of like kind of awkwardness in like the friendship and stuff. Even though it's not, not on like our end, but like some people, finances are just like some people that some people are just embarrassed or like shy about. So mm. 
that they've been <clears throat> neglecting their financial. Yeah, like, they've they've missed a phone bill for like the last three years. <laughs> like stuff, stuff like that. <clears throat> so I have this buddy that, to be fair, we weren't super close at the time. Like I just kind of met him, um, but he I met them through like my friends that are like their family is like my best clients. I've done like ten deals with their family, and uh, so he said he didn't want to use me because he didn't want to see his cheap side. He didn't want to see the part where he's like negotiating hard and like coming out to bat. I'm like, dude, that's the shit I want to see. Like, I want to see your true colors. Like let's, let's rock and roll next time. Like I'm your realtor and we're doing this. Yeah. Like I, like, I love that. Like show your colors. I don't want to, don't want you to hide that. Yeah, from me. totally. But at the same point, like I don't see necessarily, I mean, I'll see the qualifications. I'll see the outcome yeah. of what you do, but I don't see what you see. Yeah, exactly. So it's a little bit different. So yeah, they're not as like embarrassed because like I'm not allowed. To, I'm actually like legally not even allowed to say anything. So it's like you, there's no way you would know kind of his credit situation and stuff like that. And that's kind of what people are embarrassed about, right? Mm-hmm. So how much people make? Some people are like really shy about how much they make for income and all that type of stuff. So why is that? Why is that a social? I, norm? I don't know. It's I, I don't know. Some I guess some people may like feel like they they should be making more or they're like there's pressure to be making more um and they're maybe not at that point i don't know what about you do you think there's a reason why like culturally no one talks about how much money they make it's like a faux pas i think that people who feel like they don't make enough money are insecure about it and i feel that people people that make too much too much money are usually running a business or they're some type of salesperson and if people know how much money that they make they won't want to make them they won't want to give them more money because they'll be like you're already making too much money so you're not getting mine but is making too much money that's a perspective that's compared to the person that didn't work to make that money it is too much money is a different number in everyone's head right yeah But, but the thing is i think people that make too much money don't like to talk about it too much because then people will perceive them as the person that makes so much money and they're like oh they're an asshole because there's this common misconception yeah. that he people must be a lot of money he must have killed babies to get that money yeah exactly but like, <laughs> he you know. lied and cheated and stole his way to the top greedy ass salesman yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well that's all realtors are isn't it just the used car salesman in the Dude, legal world we are all criminals we're all criminals we're all criminals we steal from the public we lie and we just make way too much money for doing nothing. Apparently murder. All of us. And murder, too, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Touchy subject? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Um, a couple quotes here. Uh, oh, yeah. Cool. Grant Cardone, everybody's a salesman. I like that one. Uh, I like consistency beats intensity. I like uh, Grant Cardone again. This isn't even a quote, but it's just something he says. Take more action, man. <laughs> <laughs> one more time <laughs> take more action man oh. that's what he always says so I, I got that one yelling in the back of my head all day too and then what's that joe rogan one uh, i'd rather be uh a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war <laughs> Yo, that's, that's sick yeah actually one from joe rogan that stuck with me forever it wasn't even from his podcast i don't think i think it's from a stand-up i went to i saw him live in abbotsford with him and tony hinchcliffe oh, oh it was dude my so my whole body hurt from laughing and he says uh, I was trying to explain to my daughter about like something that she saw, like someone doing public. She's like, well, sweetie, you know how some people have little ears and some people have big ears? Well, some people's brains are made of dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, for whatever reason, I just cannot let that quote go. And I just think it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. So, um, okay, we did the quote one. Uh, what What would you say... What's some advice you would give a newer realtor starting out right now? What should they be focusing on the most? Starting out right now in the market right now? Say that started within the last six months to a year. Um, and their business hasn't really got the traction yet. I would tell them to don't stop reaching out to people. Talk to everyone you know. Like just be, don't just say, hey, I'm a realtor. No, like need, actually just be their friend. Yeah, and like, be a genuine human being. Have a conversation with them. Take interest in what they're doing in their lives don't tell them what they're doing unless they ask and eventually you know you're talking about them enough they will ask you what you're doing and if you know and if they're actually a friend of yours they'll probably take interest in what you're doing and honestly if they follow you on social media they already know what you're doing yeah anyways. fair fair enough yeah. and if well if they're new some people some people are like weird about not wanting to market themselves too much they don't want to be that yeah. guy to their friend circles can't be a secret agent no i mean well you can 
it's not, not, not beneficial to be. Yeah, there, there was actually an agent in my old office in Kelowna, and she was Agent 99, and she was like, wore a black jacket, a black hat, and like had this like wrap around, just said the mic, um, wrap around her car, and was known as like Agent 99, secret agent. Yeah, it was what? hilarious. She killed it. Though. Yeah, but but that's she's, her brand. She's, she's still she's, known. Yeah, but she's not a secret agent because she has a wrap around her car. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and then the other thing I would say is um, educate people. No matter how like first time homebuyer workshops were huge for me actually. I got a lot of traction from those, even though a lot of them were my friends that already came. But it got them in the door. It got them learning different things, and just hosted by myself and a mortgage broker that wasn't Jared. And uh, ouch. I you weren't even a mortgage broker at the know, time. I know. Probably you don't, you don't have to say that on the podcast. It's <laughs> <laughs> my feelings. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, so doing those and yeah, just educate people. Video, whether you're just posting about changes that's happening in the market or in policy or whatever it may be, anything that's aff- affecting people's housing, you need to let everyone know about it. So yeah. those two things, I think, I think are the be biggest. Be a source of value, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Be totally. 100%. Be a resource. I think everyone has their own their own sphere and if as long as you're just in front of them when the time comes that they're going to buy they're going to they're going to likely use you good chance so just chance. yeah but you actually got to like make an effort to like stay in contact with them and especially when you drop yeah. them off cookies every year yeah that's then they right. come oh. back yeah that's right so i'm going to flip this question now why do you think most agents fail ah, um they think it's easy yeah i think um it can, it's a lot. Easy long, money. <laughs> it's, it's easy to get away from you. Like, sure, people can look at the paychecks and think, ooh, look at how much money this realtor make, but they don't see behind the scenes. Just like that photo with the iceberg. And, you know, all they see is success and the glory, but they're missing everything that built that, the rest of that iceberg, right? Yeah. So they don't see how expensive of a business it is. Like, if you're, in my opinion, in real, if you're a realtor and if you're not making six figures, I don't, I don't think you're getting ahead. No, you're not. No. And the, like, and the sad part is like there's what's like you know what the stats are for averages of realtors what they make like a lot of realtors are doing it as a side gig cuz you cuz it's hard yeah it's hard to make money and be able to be prosperous cuz then then you got to put money in to make more money yeah, cuz you're paying for advertising you're paying for closing gifts you're doing yeah. doing events with re- for uh, referral partners you're like literally doing everything it's expensive. Yeah, it is an yeah. expensive business to be in, 100%, especially yeah. if you golf. <laughs> yeah, that, that too, right? Yeah, 100 There's bucks, a lot of 100 that. bucks a round and, I feel like, and then drinks on top of that. Yeah. I feel like the the realtor community, like societal pressure to golf every week <laughs> is crazy. Like I, I somehow golf like once or twice a week. Now I get asked to there. golf probably once once or twice a week at, uh, during the summer weeks and spring oh, yeah. weeks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you guys ever talked to the realtors that advertise themselves as a we don't golf realty? Isn't that Leo? Leo, uh, what's his face? I don't know who it is. Leo Rontz has a Leo Rontz can't oh. play golf uh, bus stop, and I thought that was I don't know. I was like, I that's remember their, that. That's their branding. Yeah. I wonder if they're doing that as a way of being like, yo, like we have time to do your business because we don't spend four hours a week golfing. I think it's just very Minimum. relatable. They I, know I, that everyone, yeah, everyone golfs. thinks that realtors, all they do is golf. So it's just like going against that and people yeah. will think it's funny and remember it. So yeah. is it just pure like I think it's ir- just, irony? Yeah. I, I think it's good marketing. I bet, he, I oh, bet he's yeah. a killer yeah. on the golf course. Yeah. Do you think he, do you think he actually is? A, I, I bet he hits pretty good. You think so? <laughs> if, if you're talking I mean, about like golf in your marketing, you're probably a pretty good golfer. Ah, oh, I have a I have a, a memorial tournament in my office to play in at the end of the month, and I just I just blew up my knee two weeks ago. Oh no! I was I org I organized a fun hockey game, an ice hockey game between. Oh, that's when it happens. Yeah. Century Twenty One versus Home Life. I was the one who organized it. Me and Kevin Brown, the owner of yeah, Home yeah. Life, and. Two minutes left in the game. I, I'm, I was already recovering from a meniscus injury from winter, and I've been babing it, and I've been like really taking good care of it. And I was like, so I felt like I was good enough to get on the ice and play. Two minutes left in the game, I was chasing a puck that I didn't have to chase into the other zone, full tilt, just going for it, and just the angle. I don't even know what happened. Like just went pop, Ugh. and I dropped, and I couldn't put weight on it, and I was on crutches for almost two weeks, and I'm just, t- today's like There's day crutches three. in the car. Yeah, they're in the car, because later, we'll probably have to walk a little bit further. That's so, brutal. Yeah. I find sports in- sports injuries, like, a large majority of them are like that, too. Just, like, something so easily avoidable and just, like, unnecessary, like, yeah. I don't know. Well, at the end of the day, it was my ego. It was, I saw Kevin Brown 
going for the same puck about 20 feet ahead of me. I'm like, ah, I'll bet not this around. guy. Yeah, well, no, it's not. Yeah. I think as I know I'm faster than him. I'll catch him. I I was like, we're body and body. Someone, someone even said like, yo, I heard Kevin Brown took you out and that's what hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, man. Like, I mean, he was there racing for the puck with me, but he didn't take me out. Like, he wasn't, he didn't like yeah. hit me or anything. It was just the way my skates and stopping in the boards and yeah. ruts and just blew it out. That's funny. Yikes. So what? I think we should wrap it up. So I yeah. appreciate you coming on, Clay. Yeah, no, it was a yeah. 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 pleasure fun. having you, man. And uh, you got anything to say, Jared? No, we're excited. We're going to go watch people get knocked out. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we're going to watch an MMA fight. Can I plug myself? Hey? Can I plug myself? Plug? Yeah. Plug? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. You've listened to podcasts before? <laughs> Plug yourself. Yeah. I don't know what that yeah. means, but I'm what assuming does that you mean? follow what does that me mean? on Instagram at clayton.diver.real.estate. Oh. oh, yeah, absolutely. That's where you Plug find me. away, man. <laughs> What's the, drop the ad again. Um, yeah, my Instagram is clayton.diver.real.estate. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. We'll put it up on the screen. Yeah. Bruce will put it no up on TikTok. the screen. No TikTok? No, I don't do TikTok. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in again. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Anywhere else, do the same. I think that's it. Yep. That's all, guys. Good so to go. Thanks. Take it easy, guys. Peace. Thank you.